Hi folks, just an FYI, if you have not seen my video on why Mafia is criminally underrated, you should definitely check that video out before coming to this one. But if you're here anyway, in this bonus video, I'm going to look at my top 7 Mafia style gangster games. If that's a thing. The beauty of these games is how they stylize the fictional criminal underworld in interesting and entertaining ways, whether it be to give us a realistic interpretation or simply to make an exciting game to play. Please note that the games in this list must involve gang or mob related narratives, so keep that in mind before commenting because I'm not going to explain that to everyone that misses the point of the video. You know who I'm talking to. But guys, remember to also leave your own list and thoughts in the comments below. Let's get started. Number 7. The Getaway the Getaway is the British equivalent to Mafia, but think of it as a much darker version of Guy Ritchie's earlier work. Now. Fuck off. In it, you play as Mark Hamilton, a former mobster whose son is kidnapped by a rival gang in a bid to force him back into organized crime. But later in the game, you also play from the perspective of a suspended police officer called Frank Carter, and follow the story through entirely different eyes, which adds a unique style of storytelling. It's a very blunt and bloody shooter that has the same appeal as Kane and Lynch. It's driven by CD characters, bleak circumstances, and one of the first games that attempted to remove the heads-up display to go for stark gritty realism. For example, an interesting touch was the fact that your health was determined by your on-screen appearance and animation. If you found yourself covered in blood and struggling to move, you had to lean your character up against the wall to heal them. It does have a decent enough sequel, but The Getaway has this distinction of attempting to establish its own GTA in England, even if GTA already beat them to it. Number 6. Sleeping Dogs Originally set to be a true crime reboot, Square Enix decided to make Sleeping Dogs its own original IP. Set in contemporary Hong Kong, you took on the role of Wei Shen, an undercover cop tasked with infiltrating and destroying the triad organization known as the Sun On Yi. What we got was a surprising morality tale that had Wei Shen attempting to balance his criminal loyalty to the triads and maintain his duties as a cop. While its shooting was serviceable, it was its impressive driving sequences, the vibrant open world, exhilarating foot chases, and its intense and satisfying hand-to-hand -hand combat that made the game spectacular. Being able to perform impressive environmental executions and enjoy the privilege of throwing someone in the boot of a trunk or slamming their head against the wall made the combat constantly exciting. And this coupled with a great soundtrack and a story that's engaging from start to finish made for a game that truly had the workings of a standout franchise. It's a shame we never got a sequel. Number 5. The Warriors Taking hand-to-hand -hand combat even further, The Warriors has what is potentially better than its original source material. It recounts the warrior's journey back to Coney Island after they were framed for the murder of a powerful gang leader aiming to call a truce. In the story, New York is host of multiple vicious gangs who each have their own district of operation, and attempting to get the warriors back home by sneaking through each rival territory is a tension-filled ride. But in Rockstar's adaptation, it built on its characters, adding a much more human layer to make them even more likeable in comparison to their cinematic counterpart. The brawling was brutal, and like Watch Dogs, it was also deeply satisfying to play. But unlike Watch Dogs, the fighting was much more rough and animalistic. You fight dirty, throw yourself into enemies, and retreat when you're overwhelmed. It's a game that captures the sights and sounds of the 70s, but also enlightens us into a seedy fictional underworld of New York gang warfare. Number 4. Mafia 1 and 2 Make sure to check out my full video on Mafia 1 and 2, but for the purposes of this video, let me summarize. Mafia is a more mature and grounded representation of organized crime in America during the mid-1900s. Its attention to detail, animation, cinematography, and music wonderfully convey a very rich and detailed story filled with profoundness, tragedy, and emotion. Its gameplay was also grounded in intimacy and impact, with weapons that feel weighty and guns that packed a real punch, and the agonizing struggles of your enemies was sure to shock you in its time. It's violent, it's somber, but it's also beautifully constructed. Just think of it as Goodfellas meets The Godfather, and what you have is a recipe for a good time. Number 3. Grand Theft Auto Vice City this was actually the first ever GTA game I ever experienced, and I've always been eager to return to it at some point. It's hard to believe it literally came a year after GTA 3 and still managed to up the experience at the expense of a smaller but more vibrant and interesting map. Set in the fictional Miami City of 1980's Vice City, you took on the role of Tommy Frasetti, a made man sent on behalf of mobster Sonny Ferrelli to negotiate a series of cocaine deals only for it to quickly turn south as Tommy ends up ambushed and now aims to track down the attackers to retrieve what belongs to his boss. Taking several nods from Scarface, Vice City is the epitome of style. 
the bright flashy lights and colors, wonderfully designed architecture, vehicles and costumes, and the simplicity of it all went a long way in making Vice City a rather unique GTA experience. It felt like the first ever fully realized GTA game, with an interesting story, a diverse range of quirky characters, and a world that was genuinely worth exploring. I genuinely hope that one day Rockstar considered taking us back here, because, like, let's face it, f fuck Liberty City. Number 2, The Godfather 1 and 2 Of course you can't have a list like this without one of the most celebrated franchises in cinema. The definitive mobster movie was decently translated into two video games, and while they didn't exactly nail everything you would have hoped for, this is one of those games where you genuinely felt intimidating. While managing to recount extracts from the film, the real heart of the game was taking over areas of New York through an extortion system that eventually led to taking down each of the crime families. It managed to capture the brutal nature of the film at the expense of its more heartfelt moments, but the aggressive design of the game of forcing business owners to pay protection fees and taking down rival gangs always felt rewarding and satisfying. The sequel carried the same formula by adding henchmen into the equation, but it was the gritty and intense nature of its combat that really kept me going. For example, I thought the mechanic of pressing down L3 and R3 to perform a choke genuinely shocking because you literally felt like you were performing that action. You felt powerful, and there was always this feeling that everyone was beginning to fear you as a true reflection of a mobster. Number 1. Scarface yeah, it's hard to believe that there were three film adaptations that made this list, but I honestly believe that Scarface genuinely brought something unique to the table. Scarface acts as a what-if scenario to the film's conclusion that continues the story quite logically. Starting from the bottom once again, you play as Tony Montana, a drug lord who aims to rejuvenate his cocaine empire through extorting and assisting businesses, selling drugs on the street, and mowing down his competition. It nailed the aesthetic of the film, and even the portrayal of Tony Montana was perfect, but the game's strongest feature was the genuine sense of progression it gave you. A major innovative example is the game having a legitimate economy unmatched by any other game. For example, if you have $100 in your pocket, that's seen as dirty money. So if you die, you lose all that money. But if you deposit it to a bank, you have to attempt to bargain with that bank to take less interest. So ultimately you end up having to literally work with the game's world, but we'll save that for another video. In addition to its massive, thriving world, the combat always feels like the film's concluding frantic moments, and how you manage your empire becomes important. Protecting businesses, recruiting henchmen, rebuilding your estate, managing your relationship with gangs and cops, and the list goes on and on. It's one of the most realized systems in any mobster game, where you legitimately feel like you're calling the shots, and when things don't go your way, you can always take matters into your own hands. Adios, amigo. 